Welcome back to the channel and to another dose of five things you might not know. This, as always, is the one I want. So this one is episode number 24, but if you've missed any of the previous episodes, check them out in the series playlist, link on the screen. But yeah, here we go again, episode 24 of five things you might not know about WWE 2K17. Okay, so first up today, a nice and simple one, we have got the ability to avoid table move restrictions, which in turn basically means more table finishers. So as we know, this year we can select specific table moves in the movesets, which then take place automatically in the match once you're in the correct position, and whilst the moves that we do have are pretty good, some areas, for example the corner top row position, remain pretty limited. However, what you might not know is that there is actually a super easy way to combat this, because whilst doing a standard grapple in one of these positions will still trigger the table move automatically, whatever move you select as a signature or finisher will not, and you can then do whatever move you've selected as a signature or finisher through the table with no table limits. Alternatively, if you don't want to use a signature or a finisher move for this, this can also be done by moving the table slightly away from its default position, which will then also avoid the table move restrictions. So yeah, either way, more moves through tables are possible via one of these methods, which will hopefully be a handy thing to know. Moving on with thing number two today, and we have got even more moves that make pretty cool ways to put your opponent into the crowd. So today's main inclusion to the list is Kofi Kingston's Trouble in Paradise, which if done to an opponent standing next to the barricade, as you can see, will send them crashing over the barricade and into the crowd. Other smaller moves that we can also add to the list that already features the likes of the GTS also include a running dropkick to a super heavyweight, in addition to one of Cesaro's trademark uppercuts, as well as the very simple yet potentially overlooked way of simply dragging your opponent to the barricade, which results in a pretty nice animation. Up next with thing number three today, we have got some steel chair tips. So in the series we have covered a bunch of table tips and ladder tips, and whilst the steel chair hasn't changed a great deal in recent years, there are still potentially a thing or two that you might not be aware of. So in addition to regular chair strikes, and even the ability to do your moves on the steel chair, there is also the chair DDT, which is simply done by grappling your opponent with the chair in hand. You can also wedge the chair in the corner with the two top buttons, then throw your opponent head first into it. You can wrap a steel chair around your opponent's leg by pressing the grapple button near the area, which will then allow you to either do a stomp on it, or do a diving move off the second rope or even the top rope. Same goes for putting it around your opponent's neck, with again options for the stomp, the second rope dive, or the top rope dive, there is also the RVD style corner dropkick, which can be done when doing a running strike against an opponent sitting in the corner. Then of course there is probably my favourite of the bunch, the always classic concerto. Now this one is done by pressing grapple next to an opponent's head when they're face down on the mat, then by grabbing the second chair and doing a strike, which as you can see results in a pretty awesome one man concerto. This one can also be done in tandem with the neck brace as well as the leg brace, with as you can see some pretty brutal results. So yeah, some general fun stuff to do with chairs in 2K17, some of which you potentially might not have been aware of. Moving on with 
Moving on to thing number four today, we have got an Easter egg of sorts for John Bradshaw Layfield. Now, as we know, JBL is a course on the in-game commentary team, as well as being on the playable roster. And what you might not know is that the commentary actually references this during a JBL match. Oh, you have to hand it to him, Cole. He's made a lot of money over the years. He wrote a check the other day and his bank bounced. JBL is a success in everything he does. Okay, John, now you can pay us. But I'm confused. How the heck is JBL up there and down here? Oh, well, wonders never cease. So yeah, something pretty small, but kind of interesting nonetheless. And another smaller thing about 2K17 that you might not have been aware of. However, last up today with our fifth and final inclusion, we have got some super apron moves. So already in the game, there is a course the likes of the apron DDT, the apron back suplex, and even the always awesome Kevin Owens apron powerbomb. However, what you might not know is that certain ladder OMG moments actually make for some pretty brutal apron maneuvers of their own. So, some moves that can be used in tandem with the ring apron resulted in some super apron maneuvers, include the ladder attitude adjustment, as well as the ladder rock bottom. These are simply done by positioning the ladder correctly and by doing your ladder finishes as you normally would, only this time with your opponent crashing down onto the ring apron. Now I'm sure you would agree with me, this is some pretty awesome stuff. So next time you're in a ladder match involving the likes of The Rock or John Cena, then definitely consider giving this one a go. And with that one, another episode completed, taking my series total to 120 things. So let me know in the comments if any of today's feature 5 things were new for you. Plus, as always, if you've enjoyed today's episode, which hopefully you have, then a like rating would be awesome to see. Stay tuned to the channel for another new episode of the series coming very, very soon. And with that said, until next time, this has been 101. And I will see you all on the next one.